Hey everybody, we're in Cornwall on Hudson. I'm with Rob McDonald, a professor of history at the United States Military Academy at West Point. Rob, thanks for being with Motorhome Diaries. Great to be here, Pete. Thanks. Rob, let me ask you, um, what, what does make Jefferson stand out to you? Why are you so interested in him? I think the thing about Thomas Jefferson that, uh, that stands out first is that he was kind of like an American Leonardo. I mean, here was a guy whose mind spanned wide and probed deep. Um, Maybe in the 18th century, it was possible to be an expert about a lot of things. Um, Jefferson certainly was. I mean, he was a, a statesman. Um, he was a politician. He was a political philosopher. Um, and we know that, but he was an architect. He was uh, a farmer. Um, he was the president of the American Philosophical Society. Um, at Monticello, he grew 32 different varieties of green peas. He tried to introduce uh, grapes to American agriculture and, and, and serve tomatoes at his dinner table, um, which was you know, pretty much unheard of at the time. He was, he was an experimenter. He um, overturned conventional wisdom. He wasn't afraid to try new things. Um, I think that makes him pretty exemplary, and I think that that makes him maybe an inspiration in, in a timeless sort of way. So you just emphasize the fact that Jefferson supported liberty, yet he owned slaves. Yeah, I mean, that's certainly the, the case. Uh, and frankly, it's, it's the biggest um, fault in Thomas Jefferson. I think uh, Jefferson recognized it as his own greatest fault, as his generation's greatest fault. Um, yeah, Jefferson, at the time that he wrote the Declaration of Independence, owned about 200 other men, women, and children. Uh, it's entirely possible, probably, um, the case that Jefferson, through uh, a slave, who, a woman who he owned named Sally Hemings, um, who was his dead wife's half-sister, fathered children, children of his own who he owned. Slavery was all around uh, people. Jefferson's first memory was being carried um, from his father's uh, estate at, at Shadwell to um, a, a relative's plantation near Richmond on a pillow and looking up and, and seeing the face of a person who his father owned. Um, so it was very much a part of life and it was uh, for that society and that economy um, something on which they certainly depended and yet even, even with all that Jefferson recognized it was wrong. Um, he said that uh, you know it's sort of like holding the wolf by, by the ear. You can either safely hold it nor let it go. Um, Jefferson would have loved to have freed black people and white people from slavery. He thought that slavery caused white people to become lazy um, and, and despotic and dependent upon others. Um, and yet, uh, what do you do with these people who have been brought over against their will, kidnapped in Africa and brought to America? Um, how do they fit within this new society? Um, can you just liberate them? What about the property rights of the masters who legally purchased them? Um, I think, in some ways, Jefferson was kind of lashing out on the government for making it all possible when, in his draft of the Declaration, he blamed uh, George III for committing treason against the hopes of the world, those were the, the words that he used, by allowing the transportation of slaves across the Atlantic. Um, yeah, Jefferson's generation did a lot of things, they proposed a lot of things. Jefferson had a plan for gradual emancipation in Virginia. Um, Jefferson's first public act in 1769 was trying to make it possible legally to, to free your slaves in Virginia. Um, in that instance, Jefferson lost. Um, and some he won as president in 1808, um, at the first moment that it became constitutionally allowable. Jefferson uh, signed a bill that ended the, uh, the further importation of, of people against their will from Africa. Um, so it was the first generation to do something uh, in America about slavery. But unfortunately, and, and Jefferson recognized it, they certainly didn't do enough. In the Declaration, Jefferson wrote that certain rights are inalienable. Can you expand on this? Jefferson wrote that governments are instituted among men for certain purposes. And here he was you know, following largely John Locke. Government should protect individual rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. These were the rights that he said were inalienable. When you think about it, uh, they're all what modern day philosophers would call negative rights. Um, in other words, they're, they're rights claims that don't require other people um, to be obligated to do anything to you except not cause harm. So if you have a right to life, you have a right not to be murdered. Um, if you have a right to liberty, um, you have the right not to be bossed around or enslaved. If you have the right uh, to pursue happiness, um, you have the right to acquire property, you have the right to 
um, create the sort of family or the sort of personal relationships uh, that you want. You have the right to do just about anything so long as it doesn't infringe upon the rights of others. Um, nowadays, people speak in terms of positive rights oftentimes, at least that's what philosophers might, might call them. A positive rights claim says, um, I have a right to, let's say, a, a reduced price school lunch, therefore you have an obligation um, to pay for that. The Declaration is, in many ways, a very classic statement of rights. It doesn't get into some of the modern kind of welfare state rights um, that a lot of times people speak about today.